Hey students, in this module, we're going to talk about the top-down proteomics protocol. As you know, with bottom-up proteomics, you have to digest proteins into their peptides and then you have to search those peptide masses with the in silico digested peptide masses from the protein sequence databases. It is obvious that you cannot measure the entire protein molecular weight. This is a major shortcoming in bottom-up proteomics. Also, that if there are post-translational modifications that are attached onto the proteins, which is the case in most of the samples, then you cannot easily arrive at the precursor protein's sequence and its mass. To overcome these shortcomings, we have the top-down proteomics approach. In top-down proteomics approach, we treat the entire precursor protein and we uh, obtain its molecular weight. Okay, so once you have obtained the molecular weight of the entire protein, then you can fragment the protein using fragmentation techniques that are there. For instance, electron capture dissociation or collision induced dissociation or electron transfer dissociation We'll look at all of these fragmentation methods later. We need these fragmentation methods because the protein in top-down proteomics is already present inside the chamber, the mass analyzer of the mass spectrometer and is therefore not uh, open for enzymatic digestion. No chemical reaction can be performed within the chamber of the mass spectrometer. Hence, we have these fragmentation methods. Once you have fragmented the protein that is there in the chamber, then you can have peptides from this protein. Most of the fragmentation strategies divide the protein into two peptides. So then you can obtain the molecular weight for each of these peptides resulting from the fragmentation methods. So once after... MS1, the protein is selected and fragmented, you have the molecular weight of the peptides from MS2. So the entire protein's molecular weight is measured in MS1, its peptides are measured in MS2, and then if you can select the peptide, then you can also continue on fragmenting the peptide and obtaining MS3, MS4 and so on and so forth till MSN. Now, this entire process is going on within the mass spectrometer's chamber and is therefore very accurate and you can arrive at the masses of the peptides at the same time while you are fragmenting the peptide. Let's take a look at this example. If this is the protein in question and it is there in your sample, then what you can do is you can insert this protein into the mass spec chamber and you can arrive at its molecular weight and this step is called MS1. After this, you have the fragmentation strategies which actually take these proteins and fragment them, let's say here, here or there and you can arrive at the molecular weight of this peptide or this peptide or this peptide by simply analyzing these fragments. This is MS2. Now, if you take this peptide and you fragment it further then this is MS3. So this process can continue till you can arrive at a single amino acid in the peptide and measure its molecular weight as well. Now once you have obtained all the possible fragments which in this case would be MQLF and on the other side, V, K, T, and so on and so forth, or M, Q, 
and on the other side you can have lf vkt and so on or you can have m q lf vkt and so on so it is possible that you can have any fragment resulting from the fragmentation process that are given here or otherwise so once you have the mass for each of these fragments from the mass spectrometer then you can search the protein sequence databases and try to match these fragments from the database okay so in conclusion top-down proteomics measures the intact proteins molecular weight first and then the protein is fragmented and the peptides resulting from this process are measured again for their molecular weight in MS2 and the peptides that are formed as a result of the fragmentation of these peptides can be measured in MS3 and so on and so forth. The important thing to remember here is that post-translational modifications can be easily measured using the top-down proteomics approach.